Okay, so Mikatronics have sent me a new device and this one has a rock chip processor in it that I've not tried before. This is the RK3576, which is an 8-core, like an RK3588, but it's a slightly stripped-down version of it. So it should mean some reasonable price reductions. Now, Mikatronics devices always feel really industrial. They're really solid metal. Uh, they've got nice thick rubber feet on them or mounts on them as well. I've got a Wi-Fi antenna on the back. You can see a couple of LAN connections, HDMI in and out. We've got a barrel jack connection for power. On the front here, we've got USB 3, a couple of USB 2s, USB C, which I need to test if that will sort support displays in a minute, uh, a three and a half mil audio jack, and a little micro switched power button. Let's just have a quick look inside. I'll go through all the specs in a minute. We've also got a SIM slot on the front. And here you can see there's little bungs which are for the 4G antenna. So you can position it wherever you like, it looks like. So I pull off the front, pull the lid forward, and we can see inside. So you can see there's a couple of connectors in here. We've got quite a big heat sink on top of the CPU, GPU, and uh, what looks like an M.2 slot, but I'll go through and see what it says in the specs. But yeah, always super solid and completely silent in operation. So it comes with a 12 volt, two amp power adapter with a decent sized barrel jack. A little breakout adapter for cables, which you can see plugs into here. USB A to C cable, full size HDMI. So I booted this up with just a USB C cable. And as you can see, it is definitely a display port output. Uh, the touch screen though, for some reason is out. So when I was pressing here, it, it detected the audio here. So I don't know why that is. Maybe that can be changed with the settings, but certainly not with just the touch screen because obviously, as you can see, it's completely out. So I'll plug in a mouse and keyboard to see if I can sort that. Good thing about this is it means that uh, it does have two display outputs. So as long as I use a USB-C to HDMI adapter, I can get two display outputs from this. Although it does mean that the display output is from the front and from the back. So let's plug in my keyboard dongle. Can't see anything obvious there. Okay, well never mind. Let's shut this down and plug it into my main monitor. So I've plugged in the DisplayPort cable and the HDMI and both monitor outputs are definitely working. But it's Android, so it generally sends the same image to both screens. That'll obviously be a bit different when we've got Linux going. I've been trying to get the HDMI in to work, but uh, it's just a black screen for me. And I've tried my Mac, I've tried an uh, iPad, I've tried an Android phone, and also a mini PC. And none of them seem to work at various different resolutions as well. So it's probably just an early software thing. Okay, so first up, let's play some video files. So this is 8K files. And as you can see, uh, it plays them fine. So if we click on this one and go to video settings so 7680 by 4320 HEVC and one of these is VP9 as well so it will be yeah this one I think so we click on video settings yeah VP9 and it just I mean it's it's switching between the files like they're you know low resolution files it's not really struggling at all if we skip through the file you can see that it's just instant it, it basically gets there and starts playing instantly and it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all it doesn't seem to be stuttering or struggling with 8k which is very impressive okay so let's try a bit of ps2 emulation with ether sx2 and we'll try a bit of spider-man 3 so you can see the fps at the top here so 60 at the moment Okay, so no problems on the intro. Yeah, it's slowing down here. Yeah, it's definitely slow. What I'll do is put it side by side with the RK3588 processor, uh, just to show that the GPU is definitely better on that. I'll use exactly the same settings. And that was with only one enemy on the screen. Now we got two. 
Yeah, you can hear the audio is terrible. And if I just have a look, if we go into settings, I'm just going to change the graphics. Sometimes changing the GPU renderer to software helps on some games. Yeah, not on this one. This is Nintendo GameCube performance on Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX. And I've got some audio glitches and a little bit of slowdown on one times resolution. Now you can usually ramp this right up and get it to much higher resolutions on the RK3588. So yeah, the GPU is definitely not as powerful as the 3588. It is still very good for video, as we saw it playing the 8K video. But let's have a look at the browser. Yeah, this is really good because it's got loads of information about this processor when it was announced. And there's also a comparison to 3588. So if we have a look here, so both quad core, so we're using the A76 versus the A72, uh, and also we're using the A55 versus the A53, uh, and so you can see the CPU performance is better. The graphics performance, although the same gigahertz, this MC4, when there's an M in the Mali model number, it stands for shader cores, so this is a four core as opposed to a three core. And when you see the gigaflops, 512 versus 145. The MPU is the same though, so six on the MPU, so the AI side of it. And then video wise, well it doesn't mention 8K here, but it does mention 4K 120. Uh, so if you can play 4K 120, you can play uh, 8K 30, I would have thought. And it did work in my tests on two different files, or three different files. So display up to 4K, up to 8K. Now this was from a while ago, so this was when they were first announced, and now they've come out, obviously some of the things may change, but it does basically explain why we're not getting the same graphics performance. The GPU definitely isn't as good as the 3588, but I, as I say, I was really impressed with the video performance. And there was a few charts here with the 3588 way up ahead, but second to it was the 3576, and it is much faster than the other rock chips. Okay, so as this is a new CPU, I thought I'd better do a Geekbench test. Both running Android, so let's start them at the same time. And run CPU benchmark. So percentage-wise, uh, the RK3588 is already 36% through the test, only 27% on the 3576. Okay, so the 3588 has finished. So single core 694, multi core 2639. And you can see that the 3576 is still going. Okay, so we have some results. So 694 single core on the 3588 compared to 376 on the 3576. And multi core score 2639 versus 1346. And as a comparison, I thought it would be worth trying on the Raspberry Pi 5 just to see where that comes in that mix. I'm just downloading Geekbench now using Lineage OS 21 from Constacang. Okay, so let's open and run that. And this is the Crowview Note laptop that I'm using for this, uh, which is on a Kickstarter, which I'm not sure if the Kickstarter started yet, but have a look at Elecro's page. I'll put it in the description if you're interested. Okay, so the results are in. So Raspberry Pi had a single core score of 751, which actually beat the RK3588 and 3576. So we've got 694 and then 376 on the 3576. Uh, Multi-core, the 3588 definitely wins on that at 2639. Raspberry Pi 5 had 1570 uh, and the 3576 was the slowest of those tests at 1346. Now let's see if uh, the USB-C output on the Mikatronics works with this laptop. So if I shut this down, you can see all the mouse keyboard works with this because it's got a special adapter for a Pi 5. So I'm going to have to use the power adapter for the Mikatronics because it's 12 volt and uh, this laptop only supports 5 volt devices to power them. Uh, but let's unplug this and hopefully USB-C DisplayPort cable in and plug it in this one. So I couldn't get it to work with just a DisplayPort cable, but as long as I plug in an HDMI, and this is using the USB-C output for HDMI, and this one is providing mouse and keyboard, 
this is working, which is nice to see. So the R58 and the R57 use different power adapters. So the 57 uses this one, which is 24 watts. And the R58 uses this one, which is obviously much thicker and can cope with 36 watts. So I'm playing an 8K video in Kodi at the moment and it's playing from a USB stick. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same on both devices. And it's only using six watts, which is very good, but will the 57 use even less power? Well, amazingly, yes. Uh, so it's currently using four watts of power, which I think considering it's playing an 8K video is really, really good. So I'm waiting for an ambient image for this device, but it hasn't come through yet. And what I think I'm gonna do is just finish the video here. And uh, when I get a build of ambient, I'll do a tutorial on how to install it onto the inbuilt EMMC. So thanks very much to Megatronics for sending me this to test. It's definitely very impressive on video and I really can't wait to try Linux on it. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.